here real quick. Hello, hello. Turn it down. Testing one, two, three. Up a little more. Up two, one, two, three. All right. Uh, yeah, can you hear me good over there? You can. <laughs> All right. Wait, hold on. Hello? Hello? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Are y'all really doing this or y'all really not? Hello? You good? You good? You good? <laughs> It's still, we're going to still see it. Being a stream the tomato sports media. <laughs> is this a sport? No one is in the stream. <laughs> it's gonna say save the stream. Yeah, but it keep cutting out. It'll it'll be cutting in and out, Steve. Oh, this blue chief cut out two oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, power works. Yeah, power. Work. Okay, Ben. Uh, Bluetooth to this. The mic? No.
Hmm? Y'all can hear me? Okay, now it's coming out. No. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Okay, that's good for me. Talk to you. This Bluetooth not working. Yeah. Play it from the laptop or Hello. You have the wrong number. Thank you. 
And y'all have been promoted too. Third private and evaluation committee. <laughs> 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 Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the wonderful, illustrious, historical Talladega College. Round of applause, please. Welcome to our live stream audience as well. This is our 2023 Fine Arts Festival. And I'm so glad that you all are here. You are in for a treat today. So we will go ahead and begin. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Angela Walker. I'm the Dean in the Division of Humanities and Fine Arts. And this week we'll be celebrating the humanities and the fine arts. So thank you for being here with us. Next we have on program is introduction of the speaker, Ms. Rebecca Bain, a junior mass studies. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Francis with Warren and San Antonio. I come to 
the his uncles were the spiritual five. Joint to get in the lane. <laughs> that comes with age. 
Anyway, we're going to continue on right now by stop uh, with another little ditty. Kindergarten for nine years, if you can believe that. Uh, yeah, I can't believe I'm alive. I pinch myself so much. <laughs> nine years I was on the floor on the rug. Uh, and um, I taught third grade for about 15 years. So, needless to say, uh, I did the song with them because I had to teach them the alphabet. Of course, that was a part of the curriculum to teach them the alphabet. But I taught them the jazz a bit so they would learn some history and some culture and some music, etc. So, this song is about jazz musicians. Legendary jazz musicians, uh, i.e., uh, Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald. So, since my kids are not here, I'm a retired teacher. I have no kids now. I run some kids. If I if I see them in the store and I'm shopping for bread, I run some kids. I go to the next aisle. I do I do without bread that week. Okay, <laughs> not only bread. But anyway, you're gonna be my kids today and do it like my kids used to do it. No matter if you're 40, 50, 60 years old, whatever your age, in the eyes of God, we're all children. We're all kids. So 
I'm gonna break the room in, up into two parts. This is group one, group one over here, group two. Group one, here's your part. This is participatory. This is your part, group one, you will say this. Original art, born in America, try that. Original art, born in America. One more time. Original art, hey. born in America. Got it, group two, don't let them embarrass you. They got things like that, and even though you're outnumbered, they have more, but hey, it's about quality, not quantity, okay? So here's what you're gonna do, group two, group two. When they say original art, you go jazz, born in America. J A Z Z, original art. Jazz, born in America. J A Z Z. You got it. A baby can do this. A baby can do this. You can do that, I'll do the rest. You gotta watch me, I'll tell you when to do it. Watch me, because I'll tell you when to do it and when not to do it. So, DJ, hit me. Oh my God, there's one more 
You've got to remember, I'm Carl Winters. I play Kalimba original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Imagine my kids doing that with me instead of you. They were my kids. 30 kids doing that for the mayor. Yeah, my kids were, they were awesome. So, and you were awesome too. So, let's do some blues. But first of all, you have to tell me this. Where did blues music come from? Where was it born? Mississippi, right? Hello? I heard something. Where did Mississippi, I mean, where did blues? <laughs> I heard Mississippi. Where did the blues music come from? Where did it come from? Hello, crickets. Crickets. I'm in Alabama, and you guys, y'all better, y'all better bring it, huh? Jackson. Oh, you pretty good. Yeah, she's on the right here. Motown. Motown. Not Motown. The Delta. Ah, the Delta of what? Mississippi. Right there, right? Mississippi Delta, right here. Below the yeah, the Mississippi Delta region. Yeah, right below Memphis, about 50 miles here. Right below Memphis. So anyway, let's do some blues right now. <laughs> All I need now is a nice cold beer and some barbecue.
nail shop and it's a wear and tear on your nails. I'll tell you more about that later. By the way, uh, you may or may not know, uh, after we do music uh, for about you know, 50 minutes or so, we'll engage in some discussion because you probably have questions. I doubt seriously if you seen the instrument and seen it played because it is an African instrument. And, and by virtue of that fact, you just don't really see it a lot in this country. So we'll talk, you know, we'll kick it uh, after the music. So let's get back to the music. But first of all, you have to tell me this. I know you're saying, yeah, he's a teacher all day. But I don't know who's thinking. Or you are just going with the flow. <laughs> the flow is dangerous. But uh, who's thinking? Who can tell me who wrote the song? We're going to do Amazing Grace, gospel, a gospel song. Who, uh, who did that song? Who wrote that song? Who wrote Amazing Grace? Johnny Lawrence. Not quite. That's a good guess, though. George, yes. John Lewis. You think it? You think it? John Lewis. John Lewis. Thanks. All right. So now you know. So you probably know the answer to the next question. So don't tell me. Don't tell me. So you're exempt. You're you're disqualified. Yeah, you got your award. You 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 got your trophy. The next question is, what did John? He wrote the song Amazing Grace. What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? Oh, captain of the slave ship. Boom, you guys are on it. Okay, he was captain of the slave ship. He wrote the, he wrote the words, however, the melody, the music, the, the humming came from the slave on the ship. The melody, so music plus words equals song. Okay? Songs have words and songs have music. Thank you. As I grab different colors and then the rest of the madness, there are different keys. So I don't want every song to be in the key of C or L. So I tune them into different keys. I have nine with me. I have 50 in San Francisco where I live. I wouldn't even bring 50. I don't really need 50 to do yeah. a couple of sets. But there are different keys, such as A flat, B flat, C, F, G. And we'll revisit that a little bit later, too. So,
King Jr. and somebody else? RFK, Bob S. Kennedy. Yeah. Dr. King on April 4th. Kennedy, I think it was April, uh, June 6th. Yeah. Not to mention the Vietnam War, hippies, Black Panthers. That was a very turbulent year. So this song <laughs> shook up the world like the other issues did. So we'll do it right now. Oh, happy day. But first, tell me who sang that for? Who made that singing? Who sang Oh, happy day? Huh? Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, you just followed by too. <laughs> he said it. I hope you didn't hear. Who, who sang Oh Happy Day? You might have to tell me. Evan Hawkins. Hawkins had a brother named Walter. It wasn't really Walter was in the he was in the choir. Edwin Hawkins singer from Oakland, California. Yeah. Thank you. 
you know, somebody pays you five dollars to clap for me. Get out of here. Get out of here. You got, you've been paid all. Thank you. All right. So, um, you know, get some jazz, do some gospel, double dose of gospel. Let's see if the ushers, ushers, come. are those ushers, Dr. Morgan, are the ushers ready to pass the collection plate now? Two gospel songs? Come on. We'll get you on the way out. You know, you know we'll get you on the way out with the collection plate. Kidding, kidding. All right. We did some jazz blue gospel. Uh, how about some R and B? R and B stands for red and black, right? Huh? Huh? R and B stands for you know it. Not just blue, but rhythm and blues. Let's do some rhythm and blues now. Uh, Stand by me. Stand by me came out in nineteen sixty four. A good year for music. A good year for um, wine. The Beatles were big in nineteen sixty four. Beatlemania was everywhere, you know. The Beatles were good. Like when you went to see them or when you saw them on TV, you couldn't hear the Beatles sing. All you heard was, ah! Girls screaming. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I never saw any guys in the audience. <laughs> guys. The Beatles. And, of course, 1964, Muhammad Ali, world heavyweight champion. Then in 1964, back then, he called Cash for very good year. But you have to tell me this. Who sang? Stand by me. Who sang that? Who made it faint? Oh. Na, 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 na. Hey, Kate. Huh? Hey, Kate. Hey, Kate. Who said that? Hey, Kate. 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 Hey,
Where the instrument originated, and we're going to bring the map out front now. And, uh, <laughs> okay. So, meanwhile, while the map is coming up, <laughs> while the map is coming, um, is uh, the instrument, as I said, has been played in Africa for centuries. I mean, it's played all over the world now, but uh, its origin is Africa. Africa, the Africa countries. Don't you dare. <laughs> so many people are so naive about Africa. It's not a country, it's a continent. And uh, it's a continent. It's a the Kalimba. The Kalimba is not necessarily popular in all physical countries. However, classroom again. I'm rusty. However, it's played mostly in the Sub Sahara, the lower. Middle to lower part of Africa, so the northern region, yeah, not so much. And you have, you probably have a hand out of this. And, you know, that's you what you have. Uh, so the main countries that feature the kalimba, even though it's played in other countries as well, but some of the main ones are at the bottom of the map, written, and we're talking about Sierra Leone, Sierra, Sierra Leone. We're talking about Ghana, once again, South Africa, Nigeria, some kind of neck of the wood, Cameroon, Uganda, okay, Kenya, okay, Tanzania. 
and Zimbabwe, to name a few, to name a few. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe used to be Rhodesia until they got their freedom and became uh, Zimbabwe. Now, there's a neat thing about Zimbabwe and their Columbus. Because mine, my Columbus have Columbus. My big ones, my altos, have 15 keys. My sopranos have 17 keys. Uh, I mentioned earlier they're in different keys. Uh, but higher in Zimbabwe, they have one that's a little bit bigger than this, the body, and they also have more keys. They have more like, oh, 27 or 28 keys. So, the dynamic, or the action, I should say, when you play it, I play it like this, as you saw me playing. However, there's the, the uh, Embira. The Embira has two layers. That's one layer. But you have some organ. Organs have two decks. Organs. Well, they have another deck on the Embira. So they have a bottom deck and a top deck. So you, they have more keys to, to deal with. That's unique about their columns. And they call their columns Embira. Now, in Africa, since Africa has many different languages, I mean, in Africa, you can go a mile or two in the dialect of totally different things, different languages. So, obviously, their kalimbas have different names, many different names. Uh, the Adishibu, the Sanza, the Likembe, the Yadu. I mean, it goes on and on and on. They have different names. And they have different sizes in Africa. Down. But anyway, um, some are so big you can actually sit on them. Big, this is a wooden box, but some are so big you can sit on them and you, you'll play as you're sitting down, down between your legs, you're playing. And instead of 15 keys, the, the, the big ones are very low in sound, so you may have only four keys, maybe five yeah. big, basic keys. You notice the bigger the kalimba, the lower the sound. The smaller, the higher the sound. For example, for example. Piano player, such as Pastor here, they don't need 50 columns because every key, they're capable of playing any key. They have 88 keys right there, so whatever key the song is in, they're good. Um, it's a concert instrument. Uh, also, a guitar is a concert instrument. Guitar players, they don't need 50 guitars. You know, so whatever key the song is in, they can play it. However, for me, I have the song is in G, I'm grabbing my G kalimba. If it's in F, I'm grabbing my F kalimba, D, D flat, whatever, I'm grabbing that kalimba for that type of song. So, um, normally the body is made out of wood, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes it, they're made from gourds. Uh, if you can imagine giant squashes that are hollowed out, and the keys are normally metal, but not always. Sometimes the keys are made from bamboo, uh, bamboo shoots. Sometimes they're made from bicycle spokes that are flattened. Uh, so I guess you're only limited by your imagination how you make them. As a matter of fact, one of the handouts you have shows how to make a kalimba. Uh, it's on the back. <laughs> and on the back of the map, I think. And also shows you some of the notation. If you're musically inclined at the top, uh, it shows you how the keys fall on the kalimba. But again, you can tune it however you want. This is an L for it. It's an F. I didn't. It doesn't have to stay in F. But if I wanted to come out of F, which I don't, but if I did, I would simply push the keys and make all of them shorter. So the next step up from F, then what? 
G flat, G, it's all relative. But I probably should ask this. How many musicians do we have here? How many musicians do we have? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I know you can relate, but not to bore you with too much theory. That's that's how you tune them. Are there any questions? I'll stop talking. Are there any questions or comments? There's no such thing as a dumb question or dumb comment. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you must be a musician. Yeah, yeah. Some of my, some of my. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can hear it. Yeah. Uh, because I want, I want to be able to get mileage out of all of the makers and all of this line. That's very observed. Any other question? Uh, I can do. Can you make the So, oh, so, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> um, how long did it take you to um, tune the Columbus? By how long does it take you to tune? And how long uh, have you been practicing and what made you get into this type of issue? <laughs> How long does it take to tune them? Well, um, first of all, they stay in tune pretty good. Once, they, once they're in tune, they're in tune for a long time. I mean, it could be a year or more. Because as they lie dormant, nothing is stretching them out of tune. They really stay in tune very well. But if I drop one, then, then a key could slip. And then I will take a coin, usually a penny, eh, could be a nickel or dime, and I push it back into, into tune. Because if I drop it and one of the keys gets shorter, that means it's going to be sharp. If it's shorter, it's sharp. And if it, if it gets pushed from this angle and the key is longer, the longer ones are low. The longer ones are low, the short ones are high. So you just kind of match it up with your ear. You don't have to have perfect pitch, but you can tell it without a tune as you go up and down the scale. You can tell. But you would push from either end to get it back in key with the coin. A good question. And how long have I been playing? playing? Oh, yeah. In the beginning, God created him. Genesis 1. A long time. Uh, 1974. To be honest, 1974. And uh, my first number. There it is. It's all patched up in, with band aids, etc. But it still works. Uh, this is my oldest one. 1974. When I first started. I saw a group called Earth, Wind, and Fire, and it just, the bug just bit me. I just said, oh, I gotta do this. I got it. I had got to do this. So I bought a Columbo, I think two days, a day or two after I saw them, Earth, Wind, and Fire, in 74, when they were like, they were just really rising fast. Yeah, the star was really rising. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Um, you want to do that please for the Kumba team. Wow. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you all for your comments and the questions, and most of all for your presence those of you who are here and also online. Before we do the door prizes, if you were here at the beginning, we had the introduction by our wonderful Miss Bain, and the microphone was going in and out. And I want to give her the opportunity to do that again with a working microphone. So please give it up for Miss Bain. Good afternoon. 
Mr. Carl Winters was born in San Antonio, Texas, and comes from a musical family. His uncles were the spiritual five who opened shows in the 1950s for Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirrers, the five blind boys of Alabama and Mississippi, and other gospel groups. Winters' inspiration Cooke, an African drum piano, came in the 1970s from Maurice White, founder of Earth, Wind, and Fire. After playing with various jazz groups in Houston, Winters moved to the San Francisco Bay Area and became an elementary school teacher, where he incorporated music into the curriculum. For, 40, for 25 years, his students, known as the Columbia Kids, have performed for high-profile audiences in person, on television, and on the radio. Winters assists with the Allen Temple Baptist Church Children's Choir. He also gives performances nationwide, such as the Smithsonian Institution and the Summer Bridge Crossing Jubilee. He also gives clinical lessons. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a Talladega College welcome to the Mr. Carl Winters, the Columbia King. <laughs> And uh, just so that you'll know, I do have a CD. Some of the songs I played are on the CD. Some of the songs are not on the CD. Um, but the CDs are $10 a piece if you'd like to get one. And I'll, of course, I have business cards. And they're free. I know that's expensive. But they're free if you'd like to get them. Thank you so much. And now we have, I'm representing the Door Prize Committee. The Grand Committee. Okay, so I have watched you bit. When you got here, everybody got a ticket, so get your tickets out. All right, get your tickets out. And we will be drawing for this lovely prize. All right? All right, so they're really shook and really good. Okay. And we have zero nine three one nine six zero nine three one nine six. Yes, no, going once, going twice. Zero nine three one nine six. <laughs> Oh, oh my. you found it. <laughs> That's it. Good job. Yay. Here we go. <laughs> All right, door prize number two. Shake her up again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know I'm not good. There we go. Oh, the one that fell is going to be hit. Zero nine three one nine eight. Nine eight not zero nine three one nine eight. Check your ticket. Oh, oh.
Executive Vice President here, Dr. Barbara Johnson. Please come up, Dr. Johnson. It's because of her too that we're able to have this program, so we're so thankful for her. Thank you, Mr. Winters. Uh, very enjoyable. Love the crowd interaction. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is our first event uh, to kick off our, our Art Festival week. And I think there's two or three events. I'm sure Dr. Walker will share what those are tomorrow. So, and there's something every day of the week. But uh, now that I know that you play your kalimbo with your nails, I don't think I want to play that. <laughs> but uh, enjoyed your presentation very much and all the different genres of music that you uh, shared. So thank you for that. Uh, let's give him another hand. We have Dr. Hill in the back. Y'all know Dr. Hill? Yes, no. Dr. Hill, please stand. Come give us a word. Come on down, Dr. Hill. Look at that face. Look at that face. Come on down, Dr. Hill. He loves being called out. Can't you tell? Uh -huh. Look at that smile. Uh-huh. Can't you tell? That's a wrap. That is a wrap. So we thank you for, for sharing your talent and particularly for the company. Music is a connector. We are so connected to you and for the experience you brought to us. Thank you. Please don't forget the evaluation. You can give those to Ms. Seals on your way out. Tomorrow we have Kendrick, the panel discussion at one o'clock. We also have open mic tomorrow at three o'clock. Wednesday, Sojourn of Truth Ain't Our Woman at noon. Also on Wednesday, we will have Shiloh Baptist Church number two. The pastor is here. You got to see this pastor. Come on. The, the best looking pastor ever. He's my husband. <laughs> the crochet ministry is going to be here. So if you want to crochet, learn how to crochet, please come. And then we're going to wrap it up with a faculty and student concert on Thursday. So we are just having a good old time. Please note all the acknowledgments. I got to give a shout out to all the students. Bang. Zo! We got Zo in the back. Zo in the back. Thank you. You all are amazing. And um, you can consider yourself dismissed. But if you want to actually have hands on with the Kalimbas and want to play, somebody's going to hang around so that you all can play around. Did you, did you hear what I just said? <laughs> So thank you all so much. Y'all are amazing. It's good to see students campus wide here. It's also good to see faculty and staff and administrators. Y'all are a blessing. Thank you so much. And go and have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. Thank you. Keep clapping for Dr. Walker, please. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. By the way, the, the columbus that you have, yours is not colored. However, you can color them. I have decorated my house with a few of these. I laminated them after I colored them. So feel free to color them, make copies, and give them to your to your kids, to your grandma, to your mom. They can be colored and you can be artistic. And your limitation is your imagination. Thank you.